All right, it's so wonderful to see all of you here tonight. Good evening and welcome to our virtual evening of music and art, a fundraiser for the amazing work being done right here at the Center for the Women of New York. I'm Stuart Hamilton and it's my privilege to be here to help host this evening. As you know, we'll be sharing the amazing work of two wonderful New York artists, violinist Erica and visual artist Argy. You know, gathering in any form is always good for our hearts, but I think when we have the opportunity to gather and around art, that's good for our souls as well. While we all are experiencing an unprecedented level of stress in our lives, we would like very much for you to take this evening to relax, maybe enjoy a drink if you would like to, and let your mind wander as you hear and see beautiful works of art. We're all so happy that you've chosen to spend this time with us, and we thank you very much. Now, before we begin, let's hear a few words from CWNY President Victoria. Victoria? Thank you so much, Stuart, for being here tonight. Stuart is an actor's equity actress and director. She is a performer and host with the Walt Disney Company. Her heart is in the Make-A-Wish Foundation and other children's and women's charities. That's why I know she is very pleased to be here helping CWNY tonight. If she looks familiar, it's probably from one of her many commercials. And welcome to everyone to Cocktails in Art. We are so happy that you are here to join us this evening. The Center for the Women of New York advocates for women's rights and full equality for women. Since our founding in 1987, CWNY has empowered women to reach their full potential by providing the skills, information, and support they need to address economic, emotional, and legal challenges. We celebrate women's accomplishments in leadership, sports, and the arts. Tonight, we proudly present the talents of two extraordinary women a performing artist and a visual artist. We are delighted to have violinist Erica Quach performing this evening and artist Argy Mutafis Agalaricus share the inspirations of her artwork. You are welcome to bid during the evening. Tonight's auction will end Saturday, November 21st, and you may continue to purchase one of the other pieces through November 21st. Enjoy the evening. Back to Stuart. I muted, I apologize. <laughs> Let's try that again. Thank you very much, Victoria. Now it's my honor to introduce Erica. Erica was introduced to the violin at the age of five and she would play all day and night. And she says that her neighbors were dismayed by this, but I have a feeling that they probably actually really enjoyed it. I know I would have. She joined the New York Youth, uh, sorry, New York Young Musicians Ensemble, where she had the opportunity to travel to Greece and play numerous concert halls. She attended the prestigious LaGuardia High School right here in New York, in uh, Queens, and was an instrumental major. And then she attended Hamilton College, where she joined the orchestra and the quartet ensemble, appropriately named the Hamill Strings, which I think is a great name. After graduating from Hamilton College in 2016, she taught both private and group violin lessons at Real Brave Music School in Queens. A few months later, she moved to China to work with Musical Music and Art, where she was a violin instructor, an English and Chinese interpreter, and a program coordinator. Erica is currently a program officer at the National Committee on Ch U.S. and China Relations and is teaching virtual private uh, violin lessons. She's based here in Queens. Erica is now going to share a piece with all of us, something that I am so excited for. Erica, what is it you're going to share with us this evening, please? Sure. Thank you so much for that warm introduction, Stuart. Um, before I introduce the piece I will be playing today, I want to thank the Center for the Women of New York for inviting me to perform for you all this evening. Um, the work that the Center does is truly admirable, and it is such an honor to be connected with this community tonight. Um, also, RG's artwork is really incredible, and I'm so excited for you all to see and hear about her work. Um, also, please excuse my very dull background. <laughs> it's probably the number one dullest um, background in Zoom history, but I, I promise that the rest of my room is really 
um, decorative. There's just a lot of plants everywhere. So <laughs> I, I thought that this might be the most appropriate background. Um, I, I will now introduce my piece, the piece that I will be playing. And the name of the piece is Gigue from Sonata in D, composed by Francesco Maria Veracini. Um, I chose this piece because I was introduced to it at a very young age, and it was very memorable and nostalgic, um, that, that time of my mm -hmm. life. It reminds me of the time that my mom um, would drive me to out to Long Island every Tuesday after school for a private lesson with my teacher. Um, so I think it's a fun piece, and I hope you all think so too. It, it's, it's a little bit fast, um, and it reminds me of the hectic schedule that was always Tuesday for me. So I hope you all enjoy. Let me just fix this a little bit. Oh my goodness, that was stunning. 
Thank you so much. I hope you all enjoyed. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much, Erica. That was really, really lovely. We're very grateful for you for sharing this beautiful gift with us and for coming with us tonight. Thank you very much. It's now my pleasure to introduce my dear friend, Cecilia. She's the VP of Program and Committee Chair. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you, um, Stuart. Thank you, Erica. Um, I am admitting people uh, as, uh, as we go. Uh, welcome everyone. Thank you for being here tonight with us. Um, so some of you are very familiar with the center, but uh, for those of you um, who are not, um, Jessica, I'm going to ask you to unmute. Uh, to mute, I'm sorry. Not away from this end. Thank you. Mm. Um, so the Center for the Women of New York was founded in 1987 by our beloved Anne Jowen. Again, uh, welcome everyone. Some, some more people are coming in. Um, Anne fought legal and financial battles for 18 years to have the Fort Sutton building that you're seeing on your screen to provide women with services and programs in different areas of our lives. Um, this historic landmark site uh, is the only building completely dedicated to full equality for women between the, uh, the New York metropolitan area and the Seneca Falls in Upper New York State. It is used as a library for women's history, a conference center uh, where women can gather on women's issues, and a classroom to give women the skills to be competitive in today's world. Here you can see a uh, before and after. Paige Ayers, Cowley, architects uh, have done an amazing job in creating this beautiful space. Our Fort Sutton building was a recipient of the 2020 Lucy G. Moses Preservation Award from the New York Landmarks Conservancy. Conservancy. The 2020 Excelsior Award for the Historic Preservation for the American Institute of Architects in New York State. And the 2020 Excellence in Historic Preservation Award from Preservation League. Um, of New York State. We congratulate Paige a Ayers Cowley, Architects. Thank you so much for all the work you have done. I'm gonna uh, go to the next, to the next photo and uh, from the outside of the building. And here we have uh, um, a before and after. Uh, look how beautiful the space is now compared to what it was. Uh, this is a photo uh, of our grand opening in December uh, 2019, when Anne could see her dream come true. We are forever thankful to our elected officials who have been extremely supportive, our trustees, and everyone who did their part to make this happen. It was ironic that after so much work, a pandemic hit us. And now oh, uh, we cannot use it yet. However, problems to the virtual world. During the past few challenging and disorienting months, we have helped women with legal, financial, professional, and psychological issues. Simultaneously, we have also been preparing for in-person programs to be ready when the world ends. Although it has been challenging because we have expenses we did not have before, uh, we depend on volunteers and donations by people like you. We have worked tirelessly to continue Anne's legacy. When we were planning this event, I thought we should honor Anne by having a minute of silence. But let's honor her the way she would have liked us to. So please join me by raising, raising your glasses and toast to Anne. To Anne. I'm sure that Anne would have been so pleased to see everyone here tonight coming together probably maybe in a different way than she would have thought was gonna happen, but I think that she would have been thrilled with it nonetheless. Cecilia, did you have a few more words with these photos as well? I meant to share this uh, Such three a pictures. Great and picture. <laughs> but look at her, look at how happy she is. <laughs> you um, can absolutely see the joy. Oh, that's wonderful. Next, I'd like to introduce Malini, Director of Marketing and Committee Chair, to speak about some of the wonderful variety of programs and upcoming events that CWNY has to offer. Malini? Yes. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Stuart. I'm so excited, and I, I hope everybody's having fun. 
Well, the Center for the Women of New York, we have some great programs and I think it'll be absolutely awesome for all of you and whoever wants to join, you can always go on the website, cwny.org and join us. So some of our services are Caregivers Phone Support Group. We have the Conversational English as a Second Language classes. We have Cardio Resistance and Zumba classes happening, Legal Support Team, Referral Services, webinars on women's issues, and, and we've been hosting quite a lot of them that have been absolutely lovely. Workshops and conversations on domestic violence, wellness, breast cancer, sustainability, breakthroughs, parenting school children during a pandemic, and financially literacy workshop. We just had one, and we do look forward to having some more of it. Individual counseling and support group for women in crisis. And some of the upcoming events, you should check on the keep coming um, on cwny.org and check them out. But if you remember, of course, you're more than welcome to join all of the upcoming events or as well, book club. We are currently looking for a volunteer to lead this group. So contact us if you are interested. Career workshops, computer classes, financial literacy series starting in January, gardening classes starting next spring at Fort Totten, woman artist exhibition, walking group, and please contact us. Contact information is available in the chat box. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Melanie. We really appreciate hearing about all those. Sounds like really some exciting programs and some really good resources for all of us to be able to tap into depending on where we are in our lives. That sounds really good. You know, this fundraiser this evening with the sale and the auction of the artwork will benefit the center and help provide services and programs for women here in New York at a time when there is such great need. The artwork here is stunning. I got a peek of it last night and I'm telling you, it's absolutely just gorgeous. But I'll also remind you, we'll make a wonderful gift during a holiday season that might be coming up. So keep that in mind as well as you have a look around for maybe someone that's a little harder to shop for, might like a beautiful piece of artwork. If this time though, if you're not looking to add something to your home, please also consider making a donation. No amount is too small and all of it will be going to the wonderful work that's getting done here. Please also consider taking this opportunity to become a member if you're not already and a huge shout out and thank you to all of our members. But if you'd like to become a member, go to cwny.org. Your membership will keep wonderful programs like this going and it's also a symbol of your support and uh, the effect that these programs have on women's lives and how important that is. So just something to consider as we're, we're going through the evening. All you need to do when you go to the website is click on the Get Involved tab. And while you're there, you can also look up upcoming events and some of the amazing resources. Now, it's my pleasure to bring Erica back. And I'd like her to speak, if you would, just for a minute, Erica, about the influences you've had and how those experiences have gotten you to where you are right now. I think we'd all really like to hear about that. Sure, of course. Thanks, Stuart. Thanks again. Um, Stuart did a wonderful job of running through my bio um, before my first performance, um, but I'll walk through my background a little bit more and explain how it got me where to where I am today. Um, I did start at five years old playing the violin and entered a youth orchestra and then from there I auditioned to um, enroll at LaGuardia High School which is in right, right across the street from Juilliard. So um, that was a wonderful experience, being an instrumental major there and performing, learning music theory, ear training classes, music history. It was just, it was a blast. And I was able to meet so many talented people in visual arts and drama and dance. And it really um, brought out the creativity in me. And I'll be talking about that a lot. Um, from there, I went on to Hamilton College, where I actually studied government and Chinese language. Um, and on the side, I, I played a lot of music. I spent a lot of my time in the music studio, and I joined the orchestra. I played in the quartet, hamstrings, and um, it, was, it was a lovely experience. And I was able to cultivate all that I had learned in high school and years before that. Um, at Hamilton while studying other things, of course. Uh, from there, I, after graduation, I spent some time teaching, which I had always loved to do um, at, in Queens, actually just five minutes away from where I live in Fresh Meadows. 
and I gave private lessons and group class lessons. And I decided I wanted to do that elsewhere. So I decided to go to Chongqing, China for what I thought was going to be two months. And when I got there, it turned into a year and a half. <laughs> and that was one of my most incredible experiences. And it was such a great learning opportunity for me musically and just as a person, as an individual. Um, I learned so much. I didn't only teach violin, I was able to translate classes in from English to Chinese, Chinese to English. So I was able to use the skills that I learned in college to um, teach students and students of all ages. So little ones from two, three, all the way to my oldest student was probably maybe 35. So that was, it was just a lovely experience. And I decided to come back because my family wasn't there, my friends weren't there, and I lacked a support system. So I decided to come back and I, I knew that I wanted to continue on the path of US-China relations because it is very important politically and just for global stability. So I'm doing that now full time in the office is in Midtown, but I am working from home, um, which has allowed me to be very flexible with my teaching schedule. So I've been doing that. I've been teaching on the weekends and yeah, all virtually for now, but pre-COVID I was um, part of an orchestra in Midtown. So it was very convenient going after work um, to the church that I was playing at and performing at. And yeah, that's me in a nutshell, <laughs> and a, a big nutshell. Erica, uh, I love that. Now, I believe you have a video piece that was made about you. Would you, can we share that? Sure, of course. Thank you. This is made in Chongqing, China, and my lovely friend created this. Music is an emotional language. Music can be shared and enjoyed by everyone around the world. It creates connections between people from all walks of life. We use this powerful language to bridge the cultural gap between people from across the world. Music is also more than just organized sounds and silences. Music can inspire, create, and express emotions that humans otherwise could not. I started playing the violin at the early age of five. I was too young to understand how my musical journey would affect my life, though it became a journey filled with tears and laughter. Playing the violin can be very frustrating at times, from correcting bad posture habits to achieving the perfect tone. I considered putting away the violin for good, but as frustrating or angry as I felt, I always returned to the one thing that made me feel alive music. Teaching music involves sharing a deeper part of yourself with the student. It is sharing how you think and how you manage your emotions through music. During this sometimes vulnerable process, you learn so much more about yourself. I get to inspire children and play music every day. Music is a way to create memories that last a lifetime. It has become more than just a memory that I will tuck away. It has allowed me to inspire children, encourage their curiosity, and guide them to expand their creativity, and has allowed me to do the same for myself, which is something that will last a lifetime. That was gorgeous. What a beautiful piece. What a beautiful place. And what a beautiful place to be in the world. It's just absolutely stunning. You must have been very inspired to be there. Definitely. And the greenery there was amazing and really sparked my love for plants. So I have a forest in my room right now <laughs> as a result. After seeing that, I can totally understand why. Thank you so much, Eric. I really appreciate you sharing. Of course. Now, 
to our next artist who has been sharing her gifts. Uh, next artist is going to be sharing her gifts with us tonight. Uh, either you already know her work or like me, you've been peeking and dreaming about where you could put one of her gorgeous pieces, especially her Mediterranean ocean shots somewhere in your house. Okay, maybe it's just me, but I'm telling you, you're all going to want one. They're just stunning. Uh, so I'd like to introduce all of you to Argy. Argy is an American artist who lives here in New York and works also in Greece. Her paintings, abstract or surreal, are influenced by her technical illustrations and yet break free from them. They find beauty in the purest forms of our natural environment, aiming to convey a rhythm and a harmony of color and form and composition. We are so very grateful to her for sharing her stunning work with us tonight. Argy? Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for being here. I will share my screen. Give me one sec. Okay. Um, so good evening. Uh, welcome. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, these are two pieces that are being auctioned um, today until I think tomorrow. Uh, the one on the left is um, was done in Greece. As I go along, I'll explain each one of these in the process a little bit more. Uh, so thank you all for being here tonight. I am pleased and honored to be a part of this fundraising event that will support the many programs that the CWNY offers. About a month ago, I was asked to present a webinar for the Center on Art Therapy. Uh, I met these wonderful women. I was in awe with their energy, their passion for the center, and they're working hard for their community that Despite my very busy schedule, I'm here again with all of you tonight and have become a member myself. Please visit Gift Smart, uh, make a purchase or a donation and become a member. Uh, now more than ever, we need to support each other, particularly those less fortunate who may benefit from what the center has to offer. Um, this is how it looks on Gift Smart. I separated it into two pages. It's pretty easy to navigate. I believe there are 57 pieces up. If you click on uh, a particular item, it'll show you the dimensions, the media. So my her story. Throughout this brief presentation, I will be highlighting some of my work. I'll be talking about what inspires me, what my work process is, and about my passion for teaching in the arts. Art has been in my life as far back as I can remember, hence the Snoopy up on top. Um, I often say it, it has saved me many times. I was born and raised in New York City and spent most summers in Greece. When I was a senior in high school, my dad asked, what will you do in college? That's my dad in the lower right. And I said, well, I would love to do art, but I'll never have any money. And he said, don't worry, uh, do what you love and the money will come. And if it doesn't, I'm here. And he's still here. Uh, so I've had many jobs. I was an art teacher and office manager. I worked in the arts and I have always been a working mom, but I've always had the support of my own mom, um, my husband, my entire family. So what does art do? Uh, art enriches, it enlightens, it enhances. Art heals. Uh, the process of creating is just as important as the product. It's a reflection, it's a time stamp. It provokes, inspires, it makes you feel. It is a human right. It communicates, it's expressive, it makes political, philosophical, or spiritual statements. And art is just for art's sake. Uh, so art and science, just very quickly, creativity. In order to be a scientist, you need to be creative. Uh, art and science was one, once one. During the Renaissance, you had the polymaths. It was separated in the 1800s. They are now interdependent again. Art is taught in medical schools, it's taught to law enforcement officials. Um, scientists that were artists, Leonardo da Vinci, Beatrix Parter, Carl Jung, Einstein, Pasteur. We have STEM with the art element, which is now STEAM, art therapy and neuroaesthetics. So I went to the School of Visual Arts where I earned my BFA. I went to Paris, uh, Parsons in Paris in Italy. I went to Columbia University for a year, but it wasn't for me. It wasn't artsy enough, I think. And then I received my master's um, in art at Adelphi University. Uh, who I love? Kandinsky, Clay, Monet, Matisse, Mondrian, Van Gogh. My happy place is the Museum of Modern Art. The room up in the um, left is the room with the water lilies. That's where I went when I was happy, when I was sad. Uh, 
it's a great place. Um, my happy place, that and the beach. So my work experience, I worked at archeological sites um, in museum settings. I worked with artifacts. I worked in Greece, Iraq and Puerto Rico um, and with many archeological materials from many parts of the world. I'm a professor at Adelphi University and at the School of Visual Arts. Um, my passion for the arts uh, drives me to create these courses, technical drawing and archeology span and physical anthropology, scientific illustration, art meets science, food culture and art, ethnobotany and art therapy behind bars, art as activism and social change. I work for the Greek Archaeological Society and as a freelance illustrator. So scientific illustration is very specific. It has to be to scale, which means it has to be the size of, you can't, it has to be in proportion. It's true to its subject in feel, look, size, and context. Uh, you have a little bit of creativity when you're creating uh, scientific illustrations because you choose what media to use, but it's limiting. The reward is the result, the, the, what you create after, and I'll explain that later. So these are some of my archeological and scientific illustrations. You can see they're very, very tight. They're very specific, a lot of skeletal material. During quarantine, I caught up on many long overdue commissions. Um, this was a, a group of bees. Um, they were, they're done with color pencil. Uh, the reason for this is my husband who's an archeologist and physical anthropologist uh, was, um, I guess, analyzing the damage these insects do to archaeological sites. So these are specific insects, bees particularly, um, in Greece, in this part of Greece, and the damage they do to the archaeological material. Um, that's how it starts on the lower left and how they end up. And a few book covers. I also had to do a few of those. So I had the time to catch up. So my inspiration, uh, at some point, I, the, the technical aspect of my work was driving me a bit batty. Um, so with fine art, anything goes, there are no limits. Here, the process of creating is just as important as the result. So in scientific illustration, it's not as much the process of creating that's rewarding for me, it's the end result. But with my fine art, it's the process itself. I almost don't care what it looks like at the end. It's how I feel as I'm working. I'm inspired by the Greek sea and sky, um, the cat skills, and the need for me to see the beauty in this world. There's so much ugly, but there's so much more beauty if you just look. Who was that? This is the art, the art orcs. Okay. No. Um, this piece was donated to the Mad Museum in 2019. Uh, had several solo shows one at the Muses Gallery, one at the Greek Consulate in New York City, exhibits in Greece, and many group shows in New York. So these are some of my oil paintings. These are quite large. Here as well. And you could see I like fish. No matter what I do, they always end up looking like fish. And they're quite large. Um, these are oil on canvas. Um, at some point during this winter, I started to draw birds and my cousin actually texted me, by the way, I love your new art, different, yet one can see the evolution. You came out of the sea to fly to the sky. These are in oil again. Mixed media. These were all commissioned. Um, the Maria Callas, there was a whole series was um, they were sold to benefit um, or auctioned off uh, to benefit the Callas Museum in Athens. Um, some themed exhibits, some uh, portraits, some more work in mixed media. Some of these are on sale on GiftSmart, as are all of these. So these are watercolors. These I do on the beach in Greece. Um, I sit on the beach. We're usually there all day with my daughter and my grandchildren. Um, we spend hours there. Um, I'm afraid of the water as much as I admire it. I like to look at it. I don't particularly like going in it. Um, so I sit and I paint. And what was interesting was I used to bring a bottle of water, but then I started using the salt water for the sea. And the salt water creates this resistor texture uh, 
more so after it's completely dry, the paint somehow separates. So I create them all on the beach, um, usually one a day. Then I take them home and I rework them just a little bit by adding some relief paint. And the colors um, are much, much brighter uh, when you use the water from the sea, the salt water. So arts and creativity during quarantine, the Washington Post uh, printed something in April of 2020, from cooking to calligraphy, people stuck at home finding new space for creativity. Um, for some, you have more time and fewer distractions. Art and creating um, relieves stress and anxiety. You feel a sense of purpose. Um, David Bowie once said, I don't know where I'm going, but I promise it won't be boring. Uh, yet boredom itself is, conversely, one of the most important factors in creativity, a silent muse that has inspired countless songs, novels, and paintings. According to Agatha Christie, there's nothing like boredom to make you write. So during quarantine, I discovered um, I could not paint. <laughs> I was too anxious. I was too stressed. Uh, things were piling up. So I grabbed my, my paper and my pens, something I could just sit on the floor while watching the Cuomo brothers each day and night. Um, and I started just doodling. And what happens when you doodle is um, you scribble, you doodle, and then you, you find what you see and build on that. I literally created hundreds. Uh, I reworked them. I worked during quarantine, during the protests, watching uh, the aftermath of the murder of George Floyd, the more protests, the riots, the curfews, the lockdown, um, and then the end somehow when we were all kind of coming out a little bit. So once things began to open and classes began, I purchased my archival quality boxes. I laid out the work and I realized for the first time that my work was a record of the time, uh, what we were all experiencing. I had a friend who actually took my work and put them on YouTube in um, the way they progressed. So these are some of my, what I called COVID doodles. Um, the first ones are up on top and you can see the progression of the craziness, I guess, <laughs> the quarantine, the riots and the coming out, my birds and the colors and the doodles. <laughs> and here, Five seconds, sorry. So thank you. Thank you all for joining us here tonight. Please go to Gift Smart, view the pieces for sale, make a purchase or a donation. It doesn't matter how much, every little bit helps and consider becoming a member. Remember that 30% will be donated to the center. The two pieces being auctioned were donated by me and 100% of the proceeds will go toward the fundraising event. Enjoy the rest of the program. And I sincerely hope you join us again for a webinar or one of their many events online for now and soon at the beautiful building. It's been a pleasure to be a part of this wonderful community and thank you all so much for having me. Hi, Chrissy. <laughs>、Hi, you. Thank you so much. That was absolutely wonderful. It was really a joy to be able to sort of jump into your mind for a minute and go through that process with you. I think for a lot of us who are not that kind of visual artist, to be able to, to get a timeline on how those things work and how they evolve is just a beautiful piece of looking into an artist's mind. So thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Well, <laughs> now at this point, if I've got questions, I know the rest of you do too, and we'd really like to hear them. So what we'd like you to do, if you have any questions for either of our artists tonight, if you'd put them into the chat, So write them up there. I'm going to give you a minute to do that. And while you write your questions, I know I have one of my own and it's for both of our artists tonight. I know you have separate answers, but I'd really like to hear them.、Um, so go ahead and post your questions and I'll ask mine while you do that. Not only have both of you created your own beautiful work, but you've both chosen to share your talents with others by teaching and helping them get involved in art in their own life. What drew you to teaching and working with others in that very particular kind of a way? Start off,、uh, or would you like to start, Argy? First. Okay, well, there are a lot of sirens outside right now.、Uh, hopefully they pass. Okay, I think we're good.、Um, So teaching, what drew me to teaching? I, I just love seeing the spark in the student's eyes when they, they get it. And when you make that connection with them, it's just, it feels so good. And one of the greatest things about teaching, especially music 
or art, I'm sure, is getting that opportunity to actively activate the creativity within myself. Um, that inner child that I, I love so much and I care so much about. Um, and we all have that in us, that inner child. And it needs to be there when you're teaching in order to connect with the child or even the adult that you're working with. Um, I, I just think it's really powerful in that way. And um, the way that I've been coping through this pandemic, and I, I really, really love your art, RG. Mm -hmm. I got chills while I was looking through them, and especially the COVID pieces, because it really speaks to how a lot of people were feeling during that time. So thank you so much for that. Um, in terms of how I coped with it, teaching really helped. I and being able to ask my students how they were feeling about the quarantine and putting that into music, like taking those words of emotions, because sometimes it's hard to talk about that, right? And transforming that into music was, was something, sort of a challenge at first, but it was so fun getting to that point. Um, so we composed music that sounded sad if she sounded sad or angry if she was angry about something, about being frustrated. Um, so I, I thought it was a really good outlet for her and for me to create. I love that. Thank you. Um, I, I think uh, um, Erica's video speaks for, for all the arts. Uh, she could have been a painter or a sculptor or a filmmaker. It, it, it really represents all the arts and how we feel about the arts. Um, I love teaching. I'm inspired by my students. I love when, particularly in scientific illustration, uh, their work is better than mine. <laughs> Most of them come in um, really not having any art background. They're not art students. Uh, they come in and say, oh, you know, I can't draw. Uh, I can't do this. I never did. And within a couple of weeks, they do amazing work. And by the end, really, uh, I could say that a lot of them are even better than mine. Um, I love it. I love inspiring them. I love being inspired by them. I love creating new classes. It never gets boring for me. And I think uh, if it's new to me as an instructor, um, the passion is there. Um, you know, I get excited when I discover something new and I can share it with my students. Uh, so I think that's why my classes work is because I love what I do. Uh, I don't teach the same thing every year. It may be the same class, but I change it up. I mean, a lot of times my husband says, why are you working so hard? You have the PowerPoint ready from last year. I was like, but then it's boring. He's like, but they've never seen it before. It's like, well, it's boring for me. It's going to show. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. I know when I'm teaching theater, it's also the joy of bringing an artist up to the, their highest level, not the level I want them to get to, not what I think they can achieve, but where they're able to get to and watching people almost always exceed my expectations and just bloom and be able to do that. So that's a beautiful thing. Looking over in the chat, we have a couple of really good questions. Uh, we have one for Argy. Are the birds in your art doves? Um, I, there is one dove um, because I, I, I took a picture of one. It was sitting right outside my door. All the rest are just birds. Um, I, I, I can draw realistically, photo realistically, but that to me, it, it becomes boring because uh, for me, if you can take a picture, why do you have, I mean, I, I can't understand spending from me, right? It, it's not rewarding for me to spend days or months on end drawing something realistically. I know I can do it. I have done it. Um, but if it just hints at a bird, that's good enough for me. So they're just birds, the way I feel them, um, except for that one dove. <laughs> Sneaking the dove in there. I like that. <laughs> Very good. Our next question is, as the next generation of women, how do you think or feel that the women's movement of specifically the 1970s influenced you or influenced the people who influenced you, like your parents or your teachers? Oh, my, my parents were always very, very supportive. My mom in helping me with my daughter, she basically raised her because I was in school. I was young when I had her. Um, my daughter jokes sometimes or maybe doesn't joke. <laughs> Says you're not the typical yaya, which is typical grandma because I'm not at home as much as my mother was to help with her. Um, uh, my dad, 
supported everything, uh, supported whatever we decided to do. His thing was always, you know, we'll do whatever makes you happy and, and, and you'll be successful. Um, the 70s, I was still young, but I'm learning more about the 70s. I think that's probably gonna be my next class, um, Women in Art and Society. I really, really want to do that only because when I teach these classes, I learn about it myself. I mean, women were basically never written in the art history books, right? Uh, they were the front runners. Uh, they were there along with Picasso and Kandinsky and before them even, but they're not there. Really so much has to be rewritten or yeah, rewritten basically. Um, so I'm uh, not as much influenced by them but I am learning about them now and making people known, ma making people know about them, if that makes any sense. Yeah, so, it certainly does. Yeah, I'm um, there's a, bring it back full circle, yeah. Yeah, there's a lovely comment on the side now that this, this speaking about the same thing and standing, saying that we, we're standing on the shoulders of the women's movement. I think that's a really, that's always a really good way to look at it. That's a really good way to look at it. I have a question specifically for Erica. Um, as you were playing your music in the United States and then you're playing it in China, mm -hmm. languages translate or don't translate. How was music translating from one group to another for you? Was it translating smoothly or did you find people reacted in a different way? I think it was seamless. Um, music is a universal language and there weren't any language barriers when it came to music. It did when it came to English and Chinese, of course, and there was so much that I was able to learn from that, just being surrounded in that environment and having to speak English and Chinese. But when it came to music, no, that was, that was the break. That was the pause from all the barriers. And we were able to just communicate with one another emotionally. Um, we just, got each other so yeah i love that thank you so much well, somebody well, asked somebody asked to see the two pieces that are on auction oh please yes let's do that well let me just share my screen it was the two um in the beginning great one second i'm sorry So lovely. There are these two. The one on the left is a watercolor, I believe, frame. They're 16 by 20. Um, the watercolor with the salt wash. And the one on the right is with marker and relief paint. Beautiful. So these are the two that are being auctioned. Great. So that link is available in the chat, folks. Just head on over there and you can have a look at those and, and all the other works that are available. And they are, you will lose yourself. They are absolutely stunning. So thank you so much to everyone for joining us this evening. Of course, we greatly appreciate your donations and we greatly appreciate your membership. But at this special time, we also appreciate that you took your time to spend it with us. And I hope that it was as lovely for you as it was for us. I know for me that these kinds of gatherings are just really good for my soul. And spending time with creative people and experiencing wonderful art does a world of good for us all, I think. So thank you so much for joining us all tonight. Now, we'd like to do something be to be able to bring our two artists together. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to encourage you to click on the site and open up so that you can be looking at RG's beautiful work. And while you do that, Erica is going to play for us. So for everyone here, we just like to say thank you so much for joining us, for joining us in this work and in helping women all around uh, New York and probably much farther than that. We have a wide influence when you do these things like this. So have a great evening, everybody. And here's Erica. Um, I'll be playing the piece um, Meditation from Thais. It's an opera by French composer Jules Massenet back in the 1890s. So it's a slower piece. Um, please enjoy.
so so beautiful thank you so very much thank you thank you so much, so much everybody <laughs> lovely just lovely so we'd love another look at Argy's art if you could show us um, that slide again Thanks, Argy. They are lovely. And now that we all spend so much time at home, and as we see, it's nice to have art in our background, you might want to have one of Argy's pieces when you're doing your Zoom meetings, and everyone will comment. Thanks, Argy. And I'll need one for my dull background. <laughs> We'll make sure it has a little green in it for, to represent the vegetation in China. So thank you again, Argy, for your generous contributions to the oh, Center for the Women welcome. of New York. Your gift will be used uh, very well to help women and um, you'll, you'll really appreciate 
what comes from your generous donation. We will use it very well. And Erica, you are so right. Music is a powerful language and I will allow your performances to speak for themselves. We all will remember them so clearly in our minds. Well, when things open up, maybe we can offer a little bit, if you, a little um, bit of art classes, maybe a little intro to music, get some kids involved in the arts, the art, music, painting, drawing. Yes, I love will. that. We will. And we will certainly use your art therapy background, RG, to help <laughs> those women who need that as well, who need, who need to vent and move on. So thank you for that offer, RG. We will use your therapeutic art as well. And uh, CWNY also acknowledges our special guests. Here tonight, we have our trustees, the Honorable Anne Margaret Carosa, who was instrumental in helping us with the renovation project and has supported the center and helped us support women for years and years and continues today. Uh, our trustee, Sybil Scheinwald, who is a renowned women's health rights attorney who uh, spearheaded so much that helped women and continues to help women today uh, in, in fairness and in their rights to, to health. And we also have with us Roz Liston, a former Times Ledger editor and current artist who is one of our trustees. And we thank you so much. And besides the, the three board members in this event, we have our wonderful board members, Kathy Carroll, who is our treasurer. And of course, Janine Frumenti, who is instrumental in helping us with our funding. And please do uh, stay tuned for our next fundraiser our jog walk run. Uh, they're working very hard, the two of them. And also Patty Bruno is working so hard for us, one of our volunteers and on the funding committee. So we thank you, the three of you for all that hard work and we look forward to that event. And also a very, very special guest this evening, Leith Termulin. Leith Termulin and her uh, company Land Air has been instrumental with this project. Land Air um, specializes in project development and um, consulting. And we thank you so much, Leith. You continue, today you were with us, meeting with us, helping us toward our future goals of renovation. So we, we bless you, we thank you, and uh, we look forward to a plaque over our first floor fireplace in your honor and in Paige Air Crowley's honor. And the two of you get to pick which fireplace. The place is loaded with fireplaces. It's a hundred years old. We thank you, thank you, thank you, and bless you. And also I would like to close this magical evening by thanking all the CWNY volunteers who have de de devoted voluminous hours preparing for this event and a special thanks to Cecilia for all the time away from her young family. Thank you, Cecilia. Thank you, Thank you for all of that. Like this year has been really amazing but, uh, for the center and for all the women that uh, are benefit, benefited from uh, the work we do. Um, I know you don't sleep and we thank you for all, all also for the time away from your family. My children, um, are very inspired by, by both of you. Uh, they they watch Erica's video today and Archie's art, and I am very uh, proud uh, to be part of an organization that ha that brings in women as inspired uh, as inspiring as you. Um, they saw the picture of Stuart, who is our great friend, and they were like, "Is that Stuart?" And uh, she inspires them uh, by uh, you know like every day, like when, when we see her. Uh, so thank you to the three of you. Uh, thank you, Victoria, for, for your leadership. Um, and thank you, thank you uh, for all the contributions uh, that you made or will make. Uh, anyone who uh, I saw Janine ask uh, a question, uh, there is a 10% uh, if you buy tonight uh, for any of the art pieces. Uh, so uh, please do, please enjoy those uh, beautiful um, art pieces. 
so CWNY uh, can continue to offer and enhance our programs and services thanks to these uh, contributions. And um, so you can enjoy it as well. Um, I, I think I also saw Jackie, who's our uh, another board member. Uh, she, I, I saw her uh, in the meeting as well. So thank you for coming, Jackie. Thank you for all the support from everyone. And again, like let's toss for for equal rights, for for equality, for women, and, and cheers for all of you. Thank you. I I know also that there were a couple of questions that we didn't address. Uh, we we always like to be respectful of everyone's time. Uh, so if anyone wants to, you know, um, sign off and enjoy your wine and 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 look at art tonight, uh, that art to me, like please feel free. Uh, but if um, I also like, uh, I saw a couple of questions and anyone who wants to stay for five minutes and uh, RG can address the couple of questions we had in the chat. No, well, I'll stay on. <laughs> yeah. um, Somebody asked about art and activism. Um, oh, that's another class <laughs> or another webinar. Uh, I'll be teaching art um, as activism uh, for social change next semester. And um, the, the producers of Aggie um, are giving me access to their film to show to my students and have given me, um, oh my God, so much material to work with. I don't know if you know Aggie uh, Gund, Gund. She sold a painting for $165 million. It was a Lichtenstein and um, took a hundred million to create a justice for arts for justice program. So she funds a lot of uh, uh, programs um, for the incarcerated, for people that are coming out of prison, for young kids. She's amazing. And so they, her daughter made a documentary of her. So um, yeah, once I get into that a little bit, maybe we could do another webinar <laughs> and talk about how art serves as activism and for social change.